Great. Well, um, good morning, everyone, and good morning to you at St Helens and also at St Mary's. It's unbelievably, it's the last week of term when you're watching this video. So the, the final week of term before Easter. And in fact, Easter is so close now um, that Good Friday is the end of this week. So there's no school on Friday. Um, we're going to be finishing on Thursday and then we're going to be going into the Easter weekend. And I was just going to say before starting, it's been quite a different term. If you think back all the way to January. So when we when we came back to school in January on, on that one day and then then it was locked down and then you know people went home and then then we had half term and then a couple more weeks and then actually 8th of March everyone came back and um, I know we've said this to you but you know we've been so impressed with how uh, as children you've come back to school your enthusiasm um, your behavior the way you've adapted to school life I know that uh, Mr Chapel, Mrs Scriven, myself Mrs. Lane, Mr. Adams, we've been out and about around the classrooms and just really impressed by how you're doing. So I just wanted to say a massive well done because it's not been a term like any term I can remember before. Um, and you've handled it really, really well. And, and I know we've got exciting holidays coming up too as well. So looking forward to that. Now, now today, though, um, we're going to be thinking a bit more about trust, which is our value for this term. Um, and then the only other thing to say just before I hand over to, to David um, is that on Thursday, we've got a very special Easter assembly and we're going to do that together, two schools together. And we're going to be on Zoom at 10 o'clock on Thursday. We're going to have both of our vicars, uh, Reverend Ian and Reverend David. We're going to have a few things coming from different classrooms, a couple of songs I know you're learning. There'll be a song at the end of today that you can practice for Thursday as well. But that's just to let you know about that. So without any further ado, um, I'll hand over to David. Um, it's great to see you today, David. And I know you've got a story for us all about trust. So I'll hand over to you. Hi, good, every, good morning, everybody. It's really good to see you. And our theme is trust. And um, I want you to just tell you a minute uh, that at the moment or at this weekend, Jewish people are celebrating a special uh, a special time of year called Passover. And this is the Passover story that goes with that special celebration. It is a story about a king who could not be trusted and about a person called Moses who trusted God. Now, Moses lived in the king's palace. And uh, though he lived in the king's palace, he couldn't trust the king. He couldn't trust the king because when Moses went for a walk outside the palace, he found the king was treating his people very, very badly. In fact, the king had asked people who were in charge of looking over Moses' people to make long whips and to use those whips to drive them harder and harder in order that they could to make these big building projects for the king, which it was in Egypt. So it was things like pyramids and temples and things like that. And the king gave Moses' people very little food and they were hungry and they were desperate and Moses went to the king and he said, please, please, can you treat my people better? But the king wouldn't listen. So Moses ran away to the desert to be a shepherd. Now, he was in the desert one day and he saw a bush burning. And he thought, this is strange, because though the bush was burning, it wasn't getting any smaller. It wasn't consumed by the flame. So he started to go across to the bush. And he thought he heard a voice in the bush said, take off your shoes. You're on a holy special ground. Moses was a bit curious, took off his shoes and went to bush closer. And as he looked at the bush, he heard the voice of God and the voice of God says, go, go and rescue your people from slavery. Go, go, you have got me with you, the almighty God. So Moses went, he trusted God, went back to Pharaoh, knocked on his door and Pharaoh said, Moses, what are you doing here? And Moses said, let my people go. 
Now, I said that uh, the Pharaoh, the king, was a very untrustworthy person. So Pharaoh, the king, said, let me think about it. And then he said, no. And then Moses returns to the palace and says, well, let my people go, because God has told me that if you do not let my people go, he will send some signs, some disasters to let you know that God wants my people to go. Pharaoh wouldn't listen. And God sent the first disaster. And the first disaster was blood. All the water in the land turned to blood. And, and Pharaoh, the king said, Moses, come back. Moses, come back. I'll let your people go. So Moses said, we could go. But then Pharaoh said, no. No, I was only joking. I'm not going to let the people go. So Moses back, went back to the palace and said, let my people go or God will send you another disaster. And Pharaoh wouldn't and God sent another disaster. And this was frogs and the whole palace was filled with frogs. There were frogs everywhere. And Pharaoh said, go and get Pharaoh. The king said, go and get Moses. And Moses came back and he prayed and the frogs disappeared. And he said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no, no, the frogs are gone. I won't let you go. And so this kept on going for God for, for time and time and time again. And every time the Pharaoh said, I'll let the people go. Then he changed his mind. So there was blood and there was frogs and then there was lice in the hair. And then there was wild beasts that came and attacked them. And then the animals or the cows all, all died in the land. And then there was boils on people's faces and locusts. And, and there was darkness, and then there was the worst plague of all, a plague that killed people. And sadly, Pharaoh lost his elder son. He said, Moses, I'll let your people go. So everybody packed up their stuff at night. There wasn't even enough time to make bread. And they ran and they ran and they ran out of Egypt down towards the sea. But Pharaoh changed his mind. And when he saw the people leaving, when he saw his slaves leaving, he sent chariots with horsemen and weapons after them. And the people were at the sea and they turned behind them and they saw the chariots and all, all, all the king's army coming. And they said, what, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? And God said to Moses, lift your arm in the air. And he lifted his arm in the air and the seawater was parted and the people walked through the sea to the other side. And the Egyptian army were coming with their chariots and they followed Moses in. And the people said, but the Egyptians are still coming. They'll kill us. They'll rescue us. They won't rescue us. They'll make us slaves again. What should we do? What should we do? And God said to Moses, lower your arm again. And as the chariots and the weapons went into the sea, Moses lowered his arm and the seawater came and the wheels got stuck in the muddy seawater. The chariots overturned. And God's people were free because Moses trusted in God's message. Brilliant, David. Thank you for um, a really dramatic story, isn't it? When you think about it. Um, but still, still Pharaoh wouldn't listen to it, would he? Still still wasn't trustworthy. Um, and I guess it, it did make me think a little bit about a question for us to reflect on um, in our own classrooms. Um, I, was, I guess I was going to just ask the question, how, how trustworthy do we think we are? If you, if you reflect yourself and think about um, how trustworthy you are maybe with your friends or with your family members or with your possessions, um, I wonder what you'd think. I wonder how trustworthy, I wonder if you put it on a scale of naught, which would be Pharaoh, not very trustworthy at all, um, or Moses, like very trustworthy, um, I want, which is 10 maybe. I wonder where you'd put yourself on the scale and I wonder why you might, you might say that. And, and then if you maybe think about what, what could I do to be more trustworthy, more, more responsible, but um, that's just something for you to take away and something to think about. David, have you have you got a prayer that you could um, finish off with us for today? And if, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you want to make this prayer your own, you can say amen at the end. Yeah, yeah, I have. I was going to say um, it, this story is part of the special Jewish festival called Passover. And the one thing that children cannot do when they eat with their parents is to flick food like that. I don't know, you know, but, but, but have, this, is, this is the only time in the year 
that Jewish children are permitted, or any children are permitted to flick, flick food. Well, they flick their drinks. They get their drink like this. And for every plague that was sent to remind Pharaoh to let God's people go, they flick a drop of red juice or wine at a serviette. So they go like this, blood, frogs, lice, wild beasts, death of the animals, boils, locusts, darkness, plague. Wow, I'm not, I'm not sure you're going to be popular. Yeah, <laughs> sure yeah it's popular a real so popular thing. That the, celebration yeah, don't take it home to your parents, though. We've got to be trustworthy people, and that's what we want to be, <laughs> isn't it? So let's just pray that we can be trustworthy people. Yeah, thank you, David. Dear God, help us to be trustworthy people who are honest, kind, and thoughtful of others. Amen. Amen. Well, um, David, thank you. It's great to see you. And um, we're going to leave you with a song, everyone, which is called Easter Jubilation, which is a very upbeat song. Um, it's got a Greek feel to it, I think. Um, uh, you, you can probably hear that in the music and uh, imagine there's quite a lot of celebrating and dancing about Easter. Um, and then we'll look forward to seeing you all again on Thursday, uh, not for one of our recorded assemblies, but for a live assembly on Zoom uh, where we'll all be joining together. So um, have a great Monday and a good start to the week, and we'll see you uh, on Thursday for our Easter service. Goodbye. Goodbye. Easter tribulation fills the streets and towns. Celebrations have begun. Hear the music and the dancing now. Join the laughter and the fun. Oh, raise a joyful shout.